Good morning, everyone. I'm going to do this without my earbuds today. It makes me feel better not having them. So I've got a big message for you. And it, it's, I have to tell you, my heart is um, pounding at the thought and the idea of being here and sharing this message. Because for anyone who it might be... Um, like, you know, too soon to hear this message. It could, it could be a little bit uh, frightening and I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to really break this down as best I can so that, um, so that it can be heard in a different way. And one of the things I thought I shut that window. One of the things that I'm I have found with doing these daily tune-ins and now peace talks is that the vulnerability it has taken has, has, has stretched me a little bit, but not, not really. Um, and I've come in here on a couple of episodes and said, Oh, the vulnerability that it takes to do these, I'm really vulnerable to share this. And so far the vulnerability has been really just sharing my experience and, and kind of going really deep down into the depths of what I'm going to call hell in order to pull up all of the densities and the healing, um, you know, we have to go into hell sometimes to, to, to find the healing. It can be painful on this, on this path. And I've attempted to be very open and, and honest and vulnerable about it because we are all, we are all on the same path to get to a, a moment of, of um, ascension. And, and what that moment is, is when we ascend into the higher realms of consciousness where we, what, where we blend and balance the, the darkness and the light, Priya, the darkness and the light. We, we bring it together into oneness. We unify all parts of us into a moment. And in that moment, we ascend into heaven on earth. And up until this time period, what we have known of ascension and ascending into heaven has required physical death and physical death. It has been taught to us to be feared that it's a, it's a, it's an ending. And over time and in this healing journey, what I have in my own personal um, in my own personal exploration and experience of, of, um, the spiritual journey is I've become less and less and less afraid of death, physical death, because, um, because I understand consciousness more. I understand the spiritual nature of us. I, I understand that this, this physical, this physical vessel that we're in is very much like, you know, the, the toddler stages of our, our conscious, of our, of our, our, our evolution, our soul's evolution, so to me now, I don't fear it. And I, and I have really spoken openly about that with, with my kids and especially with my husband, because, um, you know, he has had loss, he's lost a child and death and, and, and grief has been a, a big part of his life. And, and I have spoken very openly about my own perception of, of death, because for me, um, it's, it's a release. It's, it's freedom. It's, it's a soul gets to go to the next, to the next evolution. And depending on their, 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 their karmic, um, their, 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 their karmic, uh, energy, they, they go to where you go after this, you know, either heaven on earth or you just regenerate you and I would, you know, I was talking to my kids about, the, you know, the karmic thing is like you respawn in, in, in video game speak that they could understand you respawn and you, and you, and you, you get to do it again, you get to do life again and, and make different choices and evolve your soul. So I've, I haven't had a fear of death in a really long time. So when I got this, as I was pulling in this message over the last couple of days, and I'm going to give you some backstory on it so that we, we understand what we're talking about here. Um, I like, there was, there was just, there was nothing but excitement because there, you know, what we talked about on the last peace talks was about um, farewell old world. 
in that, you know, we, we closed the door and in the last couple of days, I've seen that door burning. <laughs> like, I mean, it's been burning in, in visions and stuff. And, uh, and like to the, to the, giving me the message that there's no, like no turning back. We talked about that, but there's really no turning back at, at, at all to the old world. As we ascend into these higher levels of peace, of love in, in this physical form, we cannot go back into the world as we knew it, know it, knew it. We can't go back into that inverted matrix because it's just so repulsive to us. And at the same time, what I have noticed in still being surrounded by it is um, when I go out into the world, it has become extremely painful. And I was, I just read uh, a comment on uh, yes, or two days ago, the peace talks, um, uh, I think it was Lana and she was saying, you know, over the, the past year, I would, I will be driving and just feel so much grief about what, you know, what this world has become. And, and it was the same words that I have, I've heard. And, um, it was the same words that I would have used for my own experience and navigating through the world in these last two years where things have been so obvious to me has been extremely painful. And I, you know, many of us have kind of hermited in to do our own work, but because it's, it's hard to go out into the world at this point. And yesterday I, I got back from the, the hike that I always talk about that I go on and I came back and I was sitting on the couch, you know, just meditating and I kept hearing noise. So there's a hill up here. You can see this building here, right? And it, there's a hill that goes up actually on the other side of it. And there's this big, you know, there's a big vacant lot right next to this house. And there's another building up on, you know, on the next tier up. And uh, over the course of eight, nine months that I've been here, I have watched locals, you know, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say locals because this is, you know, this, this, this part of the world has been fought over. It's been in communist rule. I have noticed over the time, like I've, I've seen how these people work nonstop um, throughout the summer. They don't get a day off. They are very much mistreated by the government. It's mafia run here. It's all about money. The people aren't taken care of. They work till they're to the bones. They're dead inside, completely dead. And they don't care. <laughs> like whatever's easiest for them just to get through the day. I understand that. I have empathy towards that. But what that means is instead of walking 100 yards to the dumpster, they, they dump their trash over, over the, the hill here into the vacant lot. And it gets cleaned up, you know, I think once since we've been here. And it is so difficult to watch it. So yesterday I was sitting here and I was, I was trying to meditate and I heard this familiar sound of trash going over. And I was, I just freaking like, um, I, like I lost it on, on the inside. And I was just like, I can't take this anymore. So I watched this woman go back and forth, throwing her trash, plastic, all the things. And I, first I was like, I'm just going to pray. And I'm going to pray that the karmic storehouse opens for her. Because when the karmic storehouse opens for someone who has the consciousness that they don't care enough about the planet, they don't care enough about their, their neighbors, they don't care enough about themselves, that they just, that it's okay to throw trash like that. They've got a lot of karma and she was very heavy and I don't say that from a judgmental place. I say that from an energetic space. The heavier one is, the more stuff they carry. She's heavy, laden down with emotional junk that just clouds her consciousness from clouds her heart. I knew she just didn't care because she doesn't care about herself. She doesn't, she holds, she holds a lot of stuff in her, in her guttural area. And there was just, there was just no love at all, not even close. And so I just prayed, you know, let the karmic storehouse open up. And then I, so I settled back down after my prayer and tried to get back into meditation and I heard it again and it was plastic and tarps and stuff. And I finally, was, I was like, F this shit. I got myself up, I got my shoes I traipsed up that hill and I hate going up hills. I do it once in the morning and I'd already done it that morning. So I was even more pissed off that I had to climb up a hill and I climbed down the hill and I grabbed all of her trash and had all the gross stuff in my hands. And I marched up to her 
And I was like, I don't want to look at your trash, have enough respect for your neighbors to not be throwing your trash over here. And literally there's a dumpster a block up, but you know where she had to go up. And so I traipsed my, that shit up and she kept saying, Oh, so sorry. So sorry. I'm like, don't be sorry. Just don't do it. So I threw the stuff away and looked back down both hills. I just cried. I came back here and I cried and I just said, I don't want to be in this world anymore. It's so difficult to see how asleep people are. It's so difficult to see that people are just dead. This world has sucked the soul out of so many people and we know why. I see it so clearly. So, so I sat all day and I pretty much all day. And I, I just prayed and I, I, my prayer is just, you know, let me ascend into higher, like, give me new eyes to see, allow me to look in this world and no longer see the, the depths of despair, the pollution, um, you know, Bud and I have been so surprised that we can't get, we live right here on the sea and there's no seafood because it's so overfished here. And, um, you know, and this isn't just, I'm not just talking about Saranda, Albania. I'm talking about our same, ex, you know, a similar experience in Ukraine. And in, in, the, U, in the U.S., we, yes, we are a little bit more, you know, um, prettier in the U.S., but I know that many of our cities have been taken over with, with tent cities. People are losing their homes. Uh, you know, like we can see the degradation of, of our planet right in front of our eyes if we're if we're willing to look. And it's really hard to see. And it's becoming more and more painful. So I want to kind of go through a little bit of and I don't mean to be a downer. I'm just kind of setting the stage for for today's message that I'm I'm, I'm nervous to bring. But the other thing, too, was I sat um, after I kind of came in and I went through meditation again and I could look out there and not see see trash. And I was, you know, was, I was really reading into the, the, the energy. I'm like, where are we going? Because at the same time, this, this, you know, the sight that I'm seeing of the physical world and, and the, the energetics of it, there's also this other world that I feel very, very strongly connected to. And this is the world of the, the 1%, right? I talk about, you know, we, we're only seeing 1% of the physical world. Our, our lives, our beingness in this planet is 99% unseen. And I'm really feeling myself getting more and more aware, more and more involved in the 99%. And the 99% is where we have the, the you know, the supernal channel, the connection with, with our, our guides, our, you know, angels, um, whatever you most resonate with. So I'm, my, my connection, my communication is extremely clear and it's extremely loving. Um, and, and, and it's now switched to where it used to be kind of guidance and like, but now it's more like instructions, it's training, it's, more detailed on um, what I'm going to call like the next step of my mission. And so it's now coming in um, as I, th I think as my consciousness has has expanded, it is now coming in to, you know, what my purpose is, what my um, what my I'm going to call it my mission, but um, my next job is in in this this heaven on earth place, wherever this place is. And we've, we've seen, you know, in this community, we, you know, we've, we've seen it called blessed Gaia. We've, we've seen it called, you know, called different things, new earth. Um, but it, it, like, I haven't really understood what that is. I've just been kind of tuning in more on what my role is. And, and I really like that role because it's just to be, to, to be me and to have and to build community and just be a beacon of, of, of light for, for people. And that seems very simplistic, but I, I see how it works. I've been given the, the, the vision of what it looks like. So part of um, yesterday was sitting and I finally started to get to a different energy, a higher energy after clearing out that trash. Um, you know, that was kind of like clear. It was like literally a, a metaphor for clearing out like the, the more gunk, you know, from my from my field. And all of a sudden I felt uh, like an ascension column, I call it. I felt myself rising up. So when I sat here later on in the afternoon, I pulled in a pretty, pretty, um, 
clear message. And it was about now is the time when we are living in full capacity, right? So we shut that door, it's burned shut. Like there's no going back to the world of existence out here. It now is, it's only eyesight forward we are now ascending into the higher the higher states of, of new earth. Living in full capacity, now is our time to take up space. I know for many of us in this in this community, we've always we you know we had these, we've had gifts, we've had, we knew we were different. We didn't maybe we didn't know we had gifts. We just knew we were different. We couldn't fit in. We couldn't please, <laughs> we couldn't please the people that we were supposed to, you know, to be in love with or, or, or whatever. We've just had a very dip, more, like more emotionally difficult life. Um, so we've kind of just shrunk back into the, and, you know, closed our voices down, just quiet, quietly went through life, maybe felt a little bit invisible, but now is when we start to become more visible. We take up more space. We live in full capacity. And I really, I was like really resonating with that. I could feel myself getting higher and higher with that. And I will say, I don't like take any drugs. Like I don't smoke in anything. Like this is full natural like connection. So there, there was a, uh, I could feel a very visceral um, ascension uh, of rising. And I also knew that was an answer to what my, my pretty much my only prayer is now in this moment, I ascend higher and higher into the light of the creator and into heaven on earth because I'm not afraid to pray it that way, because it doesn't mean I'm going to die. You know, maybe it does, but I'm not afraid of that. But um, in, 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 in this time, when we are, we are ascending, we are, the consciousness is the mass consciousness is now um, expanding and, and awakening so that we can ascend into a higher expression of our planet, of our, of our lives in these higher frequencies. And our bodies are now have been being prepared to be able to live within the higher frequencies of the fifth dimensional realm, which was never possible before, which is why when one soul was ready to, to ascend into those higher consciousnesses, the body had to, it had to leave the body. And so that's like, that's where physical death happened. But now we're in that time period where our bodies have, I mean, this has been a prophesied time. We've talked about this. There's a workshop on my website about it. So we are now able to, 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 to rise up into these higher frequencies of the, the, the fifth dimensional, the new earth, whatever you want to call it. Therefore, we are now getting ready. Many of us are, are starting to get ready, which is why this, this physical world has been so painful. So then um, I watched, did my spiritual studies. So then we come into this morning. And this morning I woke up and um, I usually say a prayer before I wake up. I wash my hands <laughs> and um, that's a new practice that I, that I came across. And I, I'll talk about that at a different time, but um, it's good for us to wash our hands when we, we wake, when we, um, when we wake up and I can talk about that later, but I did that and I came back and I just, I said my prayer. And then I, um, I just looked at the Schumann resonance really quickly to see what kind, you know, if there was any energy or whatever, cause I felt, I felt a buzzing. And when I looked, when I looked at the Schumann, I want to pull it up. I don't know if it's changed at all. Um, hold on one second. No, it hasn't. So look at the Schumann. There's nothing. And I was like, wow, there's nothing. And the Schumann is what measures Earth's heartbeat, right? It's been it's been around since I think the 50s or 60s. And I'm like, there is nothing on there. That's interesting. Didn't really get anything. I went from I took the dogs, went up to the to the top of the mountain, and we were walking. And as I walk as I was walking, I got the word flatlined. Flatlined. And I, you know, we all know what flatline means. And it, there was no no fear in it. I was like, ooh, what does that mean? And immediately I look, I remembered what the, the Schumann looked like. And I was like, does that have anything to do with the Schumann? And and sometimes with with my, you know, with with our messages that we get, we'll just get like a quick message like that, but we won't get the explanation. It's for it's a seed to open up an illuminating moment. It's a seed to open up an awakening, an awakened moment an illumined moment. So I know enough now that I just let it, I just let it sit there. 
I wasn't like, what is it? What is it? And I went and I did my thing at the end of the path, my big rock. I, I talk about that. I sat it like I sit in every single day for months. Now that was gone the other day. I don't, I can't imagine what happened to it. It's not around anywhere. I don't, it's the craziest thing. So I was sitting on a different rock and saying my prayers while the dogs ran around, came back and um, got us breakfast. And I sat down and immediately as I just kind of got settled. Okay. So this is where the, the bigness starts. Here's where the message starts. So, oh, Hey Brenna, I just saw that your name was on there. Um, as I sat there, I got the message. I will be taking you to your jet. <laughs> and I was like, what in the like, flat line? And now you're taking me to a jet. What, what the hell is all of this? So I just sat and y'all, I got this energy, this energy kind of just took over. It was a really big energy. I don't think it was an, it wasn't an entity. It was from within. It was as if it's like this big split of energy came and I, I like, I felt my whole self expand and I started to remember like my travel from this world to my heaven on earth. And as I'm like going through the process, but the, as I'm, let me just finish that thought. As I was going through the process, it was the most exciting thing. And it was so logic, it logically made sense. So my, my mind was like, oh, okay, now I see there were dots being connected. The dogs were with me. And I, I sat, although I was sitting, I was in this, I was so in the process of this. I was in the transportation of it that I could feel like just everything in me expanding and expanding and expand my consciousness. I could just feel it all. And, and I, when I finally kind of came back down into my body, I journaled it out pretty quickly. It's pretty unique to me. It's not going to be the same for you, but it was very detailed in how I go from this world to, to heaven on earth. And I really understood what was happening. So, but I was still kind of like, okay, so like, when does this happen? You know, what, what, what exactly was, was that, you know, and it was, um, it's really just hard to explain. So please just bear with me here. So then I, I sat with that. I was kind of like buzzing and I was really, um, I, it didn't take me to the actual heaven on earth. It stopped right before I got there. And I think that's interesting because, um, and it had to do with a jet it had to be, you know, it had to do with being on a jet. And what was interesting about it is as it, as I was on this, you know, this, this journey, all of a sudden I just started to lose energy. I could feel like I couldn't hold it enough to see where we went. But the other thing I understand, I always, not always say it, but I've said it a few times on here. We are given what we need to know in the moment. So it was kind of like I was, be, I was given a precursor of here's what to expect. So I sat with that and, and as it kind of started to end, because I was losing energy, I was so tired. I laid down this is at 10 o'clock in the morning, like way early for a nap already, but it was that, that was, it was that big of energy. I woke up at, at 1130 and I, I, I sat up and I was so disoriented. I felt out like out of this world. If it was a, it was a very, it was such a weird experience. I've had similar experiences before, but just, it was so random. It came out of nowhere that I was like sitting with it. And then I just kind of did some things around here. I started packing up because part of it was like, when the time comes, you got to be ready to go. And I've been getting that message. You got to be ready, get ready to bend. I talked about that on the last peace talks. So I started, I was packing up more stuff. I, I got crap all over this table. I actually do a pretty good job of cleaning it, like keeping it on this end so you can't see it. But I just started packing things up because I'm getting ready to move. And I'm not sure that I'm going to San Diego, like I've been talking about, right? Or California. This is something different and I'm going to, I'm going to get there. Okay. So then I sat down in the morning or I'm sorry, in the afternoon and flatline came again. And I knew at this point I was getting information on it. So this is what I'm going to read to you. And this is, and I'm, I'm needing you to hear this from the higher perspective of the Ascension process. Okay. This is what I was talking about when we first came online here. This is something that could be interpreted by a smaller mind. I don't mean it's like that in a judgmental, but like in a smaller consciousness, a lower consciousness is something that could sound scary. 
but we're going to break it down a little bit so that you understand what we're talking about here. Okay, so here's what came through. Um, the flat line. So today is 11 1 2022. Take zeros out 1 1 1 2 2 2. That is a nine day, right? Nine is the end of a cycle, the end of a the end of a chapter, so to speak. Okay. So here's here's what it says. I'm just gonna read it so so I don't paraphrase. You have reached the resonance now where the earth has flatlined. Her systems are shutting down and is no longer sustainable for you to live. For those who can see and feel the death, you are now being prepared to evacuate the body. The body of earth is, is all that means, okay? Please, please just listen to it first and then we'll, 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 I'm going to tell you what I, I believe it, it means. Each of you will be led in a way that is most in resonance with you so that the evacuation is one of familiarity and excitement. This is the time you've been waiting for. The evacuation will happen in waves, not like Titanic style evacuation of men, women, or women, children, then men. This will be one of resonance. Those with a higher resonance are most compromised from the death of earth. The lowest resonating humans are almost dead themselves on a soul level. Therefore, they will be the last to go. You will be evacuated to the physical bodies that are most in resonance with each of you. Your souls have chosen this. Therefore, each soul will have an inkling on where they are going, which is which made me understand the the, the vision I was given earlier today. Your resonant consciousness family and pets will go with you, although they may not be on the same transport carrier as you. This sounds all so crazy. My mom's going to watch this and think I've lost my mind. You will meet up on the resonating physical body you have chosen to go to. Everyone knows where to go, although you may not yet know this consciously. As you reach your scheduled departure, you will remember the details, as if a light has gone on and illuminated the pathway. You will remember more as you travel closer to your destination, so the trip is revealed as you go. It's kind of a surprise. You do not tell, feel fear as there is nothing to fear. Each soul will carry on in their own, in their resonant frequency. So even the lower frequency souls will operate as they are. So there will be an energetic familiarity through this, this process, this evacuation process. For you, sweet soul, receiving this message, this indicates a transition to a higher level of being, raising your energetic vibration quickly and beyond anything you have ever known and pure enlightenment, revelation of what is beyond the veil. Okay, so I'm writing that being like, what? Like, this is like a big message. It was big when it came through too. I finished it maybe around 1.30 and I was like, G -g 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 -g. and I was just like, this is so much energy for today. It's like too much for me. And I still had to come on here, right, Brenna? So let me let me break this down. I'm losing, my, the sun's about to go down. I'm losing light and I want to make sure I get through this. So I might, have, might be a little bit dark for me here in a little bit. Okay. You've reached the resonance now where the earth has flatlined. Okay. So I'm going to bring in some other, um, other messages, um, uh, or other channels that I, that I have seen and followed. Okay. And I haven't fully resonated with, some, with some of the other, um, channels on Instagram and YouTube and stuff. Uh, and so I'm not part of any, any, of any communities at all, really, not really at all. Um, I just kind of watch, I, I watch and I piece together things that I get. And, and this, this, this is the same kind of message. Take from this, what is for you and leave, be, leave behind what is, what is not. So you've reached the resonance now where the earth has flatlined. We've heard in other channels where, you know, the soul of earth has, has left. Okay. So let's just put that in perspective of a, of a body. When the soul is finally ready to go, it leaves the body and, and the physical body then starts to shut down, right? The heart stops, the brain stops, then the other systems start to, to stop. It's a progressive kind of, um, it's a progressive death, right? Again, 
we're not talking about physical death. We kind of are of the, of the earth, this earth that we're on. That's why so many people just feel dead. There's nothing coming up from the ground anymore. So the, the resonance now has, has flatlined. Therefore, those of us who have risen up to, to kind of higher levels and can see, we now realize that the, the, the flat line is there. She's like, she's, she's, not, she's not here anymore. The soul of this earth is gone. And therefore the humanity, and we see the systems, everything on it is now kind of becoming soulless, right? Her systems are shutting down and is no longer sustainable for you. So much of, of the earth sustains us in the energy of nature and, 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 you know, the, the, the elements, that's a lot of our sustenance. It's not the, necessarily the food we put in, it's the water and much of the water. I mean, I can't drink anything, but out of plastic bottles, I have to buy plastic bottles every couple of days. It pains me to no end. Same with Ukraine. There's no free water. Like these people have to either buy water or they drink really polluted water. And that's a lot around the world. So our, our systems have been polluted so badly. Our earth has been polluted so badly that it's no longer sustaining us. And we have reached a kind of a level where, where we, we can't be sustained. And energetically, not only can we like physically be sustained, but energetically without a soul, there's nothing to, to, to sustain us who are in those higher levels. Even going into, you know, into nature, is not getting us as much of a, of a boost of, of energy as it used to. For those who can see and feel the death, which is us, many of us look around, like I was explaining yesterday, I looked at that woman, I was like, she's dead. You have to be dead to just feel like it's okay. I mean, it's not just her. We've had so many confrontations over the summer with just people throwing their trash and like, it's, it's trash is everywhere, you know? I, I show the beauty of Saranda, but let me tell you, there's a lot of, of and it was in Ukraine and obviously in, in Mexico, we, many of us know that. And it's, it's becoming, you know, I saw it a lot in, in Austin and, and in the States when we were still there. So we can see the death and now we're being prepared to evacuate. <laughs> so this, and again, how I, the, the vision I was shown this morning was literally like, how I was getting out of here, but it was on a jet. It was all, and that's what it says. Each of you will be led in a way that is most in resonance with you so that the evacuation is one of familiarity and excitement. And when I was, I was growing and growing and growing, watching this vision because it was so exciting and I knew I was going to my heaven on earth and, and yet I was on a jet. So it was like familiar, you know, like there are other channels to talk about. You'll get on, you know, we'll get on our spaceships and we'll go. And like, my, I'm still kind of like, wait, what? Like, I get that. And I think that's cool shit, but I don't know. So I think what, what this means is we will be moved in whatever ways, in, in ways that, that our minds can understand, you know, like that, that it's not going to be some crazy weird, you know, thing that's going to like blow our minds so much that, you know, it, 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 it over overwhelms our system. So it will be, um, so I was, it was, it was in a jet. And it was all like cool and normal, you know, it wasn't anything weird or anything like that. Um, this is the time you've been waiting for. And that's what I believe we've been talking about on the peace talks, the time of illumination when the spiritual world meets the, that moment where the spiritual world meets the physical world, illumination, revelation, farewell, old world. I'm going to the new world. I'm moving into the new world. None of us know, have known really what that is. We've, we've had these, you know, these different nuggets from different channels. But I think we're, we're like I, I said the other day, I think we're getting close to this. And especially those of us in, in the resonance to be hearing this message at this point. This message is for us to, to, to tune into because, I, you know, this message isn't for the lady that was throwing trash because her consciousness is at a lower level you know, obviously it's not a judgment. It's, it's just where we are. It's the facts. It's truth. Like there are so many different, different, um, resonances and we are in a resonance of love. So, you know, we, we're, we're going to, um, move to, we're the pioneers, right? Moving into heaven on earth, moving into, um, the new earth, into the, the physical manifestation of heaven on earth. 
the, the physical materialization, uh, materialization of our individual heavens on earth, whatever those, those have been, those visions have been, they're becoming more illumined. They're becoming more illumined. So just really be a pay it be, you know, paying attention to what is being illumined for you. Okay. Those of a higher resonance are compromised. We've talked about that. You will be evacuated to the physical bodies that are most in resonance with each of you. So this is where I think other channels have talked about, you know, we've got new earth, right? Some of us are going to new earth. And then there's like other bodies, like I, I you know, I, I sound, they sound, it sounds logical to me. It sounds truthful to me where there might be someone where like people need to go to regenerate a little bit. Maybe they're in like the, 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 you know, the, the gray area where they're up and down still. So they have to, to, to go and regenerate a little bit before they go to, to, to so now I'm, I'm understanding that a little bit more. And then some will, will just stay here. They'll stay on this earth and, you know, and, and just, um, do their best to, to live as, as much as they can. Um, they've made, they've made choices. So we're all, we're all, I'm figuring this out as we go, y'all. So I'm, I'm not coming from a place of this is how it's going to be. It's still very confusing. And this is why I said coming on here, I'm super, super um, nervous about sharing this because this goes way, way out of my comfort zone of, of vulnerability of sharing my feelings. This is sh like now sharing visions and um, messages that, that I have, I haven't shared yet. So um, the, you know, my ego wants to be like, well, what if in a week you're still here? Then I'm like, that I'm still here. I don't know. I'm just sharing what's coming to me and hoping it makes sense and, and hoping that it hits on some of you, you all, and we can piece this together, together, piece this together, together in a unified way. Um, so your resident conscious family and pets will go. I saw like I, although I was um, being transported with my, with my dogs, because physically I am here. Bud is here. My boys are just, you know, a little bit north of, of Bud. But what I have been shown over and over again prior to this vision this morning is that we are we are all together. Like we're all good, you know. So I have zero fear about this. I have zero fear, I promise. And I'm away from I'm by myself here. I'm away from my mom and away from my family. And there's there's no fear because I know where I'm going. Um you may not be on the same transport carry. So you may not be on the same transport carrier. So, you know, depending on where everybody is, you, you might, you know, you might be on one flight and someone else might be on another flight, but you're, you all know where you're going. All of your, your souls have chosen where you're going together. So, you know, just know you might be traveling by yourself, whatever the hell this means. Okay. As you reach, and, and I don't know, maybe you'll go in a car, maybe you won't go anywhere. I don't, I don't know what this means for each of us individually. Um, sorry, I don't have too much information. I don't have all the information. I just have this piece. Okay. As you reach your scheduled departure, you will remember the details. So this is why I've been packing up because literally in the, in the, the details that I got this morning in the little, the little section of what I remembered was, you know, I have an hour to get ready and then we got to get out. We got to like, not get out like panic. Like we were, we, we got a, we got a schedule to keep. So you got an hour. So I'm like, well, if I only have an hour, I better get my shit together. I got, you know, and just be prepared. Um, so as you reach your, you will be, you will remember the details. So I think I was being reminded of the details of how I, how my trip goes as a, as if a light has gone on and illuminated the pathway. I got a little bit of my pathway illuminated. You will remember more, but I think as, let me just finish that. You remember more as you travel closer to your destination on, on the trip. So I think that's why I, I couldn't hold the energy until I got to the heaven on earth. Like I was like, wait, what? And I don't get to see where I'm going, but I was felt safe and I felt good. And I trusted the whole thing, but I was only given like, Hey, just to ex expect this, you're going to be good. So when the time comes and you say, you know, somebody says you have an hour, like it's all good. But there's a, there, there, what I love um, that I got a very, uh, I got a sense that there's an element of surprise for where, like what this place is, where we're going, what my heaven on earth looks like. <laughs> Pretty just snoring down here um, right next to me. So there's like an element of surprise. There's the, there's a joyfulness. There's a fun in this that they're keeping because I haven't been able, I've, I've, I've worked at it. I have sat in meditation been like, tell me what it looks like. Where am I going? What does my heaven on earth look like? And I have these ideas because I've been formulating them for my entire life. And especially in these last, 
you know, a few couple of years, few years. And, and especially in this last year, now that I've kind of, I'm, I'm understanding where we're going, I know I've been working with my higher self on designing and creating this heaven on earth and this community. So I, I don't think that I'm being shown it simply because it, they want it to be a, a surprise. So phys, like physically, when it, when it, when it comes into our reality, we're like, oh my God, this is what it looks like. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, do not fear as there is nothing to fear. Each soul will carry on in their resonant frequency. So even the lower frequency souls will operate as they are. So there will be an energetic familiarity. So anyone who is still operating in, in those lower realms of, of like, if they're in, you know, they kind of live in fear, they're used to being in fear. So they're, they're, it's just going to be like a, a parallel move, right? So we're, we're going to be parallel moved off of this planet that is like now flatlined to, to a parallel place. I don't know if it's a different planet, y'all. I don't, that, that question has been with me for a while. I'm like, is it a different planet? And like, I don't know. Or is it a different dimension? I think it's just a, you know, a different dimensional reality. Um, and how, I don't really know how to explain that. So, but it's just going to be a parallel move. So no one will really like really get it. We, but because of our of higher consciousness, we are more aware. We are aware of our surroundings. We are aware of energy. We are aware. We are tuning more and more into that 99%. So we are, we, we have more data. We have more awareness in, in the seen and unseen. So we're more conscious of this journey where many won't be. Okay. So I hope that makes sense um, for you. Okay. So for you, sweet soul, receiving this message, that means you, you know, it came through me, but you are getting this message this indicates a transition to a higher level of being, raising your energetic vibration quickly and beyond anything you have ever known and pure into pure enlightenment, revelation of what is beyond the veil. I don't know what that means, but the one part of this that I that I liked was the energetic vibration quickly. I think that's what um, I experienced as I was being shown kind of like this little portion of, of, of the, the journey, the details. Um, I was rising up so like so high that like it, it literally was like I couldn't hold it anymore, which is why, you know, everything stopped. I came back into my body and I had to sleep for 90, 90 minutes. I was like it was but in in that that high like that quick um, ascension up into the higher realms, it was all it was it was because it was like what I was seeing was so exciting. Like, oh, my God, now I get it. OK, yes, yes, yes. So I don't know, like uh, when this happens, I don't know when the reality, like when this physical body literally is like packing up bags and putting the dogs in the leashes and getting into the car that takes me to, you know, to a, a plane. Um, I don't know that that's a very vulnerable part of this. Like what if it doesn't happen that then I'm just sitting here, I'm a crazy person talking about a vision I had, but you know, maybe it's just a really great story or maybe it is what, what it's, telling me it is and and this is the next the next phase um the evacuation phase of getting us out of this world and moving into a higher dimensionality uh, of of reality where where we start to then live the physicality of these these um images and these these visions as as um as reality so take that message for what it's worth leave behind what doesn't you know if you think it's crazy I completely understand if it resonates. I completely like love you for resonating with it. Um, I don't know. I'm just sharing it as I go because I think it's so fascinating and I've never had, I've never had experiences like this. I've had some trippy experiences, but it, like in ayahuasca and, and um, you know, like after smoking some stuff before, but um, that hasn't been, that hasn't been in my reality for a long time now. And this is fully, um, this is fully higher consciousness. This is fully um, new. And I think it's fascinating. I am having fun with it. There, I have no fear with it. It's not, it's not things I'm making up. I, I can tell, you know, I have made up stories. I, I like not to you guys, but like in creative writing, I know like the feeling of that. This, this is completely different. And the fact that after I came back from the walk and, and fed the dogs and sat down on the couch and all of a sudden I just was like taken, oh, like 
I don't want to, I say taken over like it was an out, like it was something coming in. It was just like from the inside out. I was just like, whoa, what's coming through? And it was all of a sudden like, here's what it's going to look like. And um, I've never had that kind of detailed experience before. So I feel like there's something to it. So I'm sharing it and take with it what you want. So what does everybody say? Bruce Lipton has a great conversation about how we are not living in harmony with the planet and her resources. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, uh, like, I can feel that. So I've seen it, I feel it. And, um, I'm, I don't have words for it. Like it's so painful. It's been so painful to just see this world and, um, be in some of the most beautiful places and, and just see it defiled, just see it defiled. Um, I can't, I'm like, I keep saying it, but like <laughs> to, to watch people just so nonchalantly, like finish a water bottle and throw it. Um, one night, Bud and I, during the, maybe it was in August, September, early September, Bud and I were sitting out on the balcony here at night during, and it was still season and people were coming, they come in all summer renting these condos. And this couple drove up in, you know, from Italy, they were Italian, drove up um, in their brand new Range Rover. And I say that simply because, you know, this world of, of money means, doesn't mean that you're intellectual, doesn't mean you're smart, <laughs> doesn't mean that anything to me. And, you know, they, they roll up like they own the world and, you know, they've driven from Italy here. So many, many, you know, a few hours in the car. And, you know, after a road trip, what do you do? You have a lot of trash in there. The guy, well, I don't do this, but like, you know, you have a lot of trash after a road trip. The guy gets out, puts his car in park, gets out, pulls up all of his trash and just throws it right over, like right over here. And Bud's sitting at the, the, the glass wall there. And I, I didn't see it because I'm sitting next to him on, you know, off the wall. But I hear him. He just, he's sitting there like this, just in this chair. And he's like, you're a piece of shit. And I was just like, what is going on? And he got up and he's like, you better clean that shit up. Otherwise I'm going to come down there and I'll clean it up for you. And I swear to God, you're not going to love it. And I was like, oh my God, I just want some peace. But he was right. And the guy like got out and instead of <laughs> what he did, he, the guy got back in his car. Cause I think he was afraid of Bud, you know, his bald headed tattooed guy yelling at him and his wife got out and she's like, this isn't your home. He's like, bullshit. I got to go. I, you know, and he was like, just yelling at her. And, and she said, your home is up there, not over, not down here. Like she was arguing for the fact that it was like th where they threw the trash wasn't our home. He said, so Bud's like, but it's my front yard. If it's okay if I come to Italy and throw trash in your front yard, are you okay with that? And her response is like, I'm calling the police. You've offended me. <laughs> oh my God. It was like so absurd, but it was so absurd y'all that like, we literally like after that, you know, Bud had to calm down cause he was ready to like, he was literally ready to like go down there. And I sat here and I just was just like, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand what has happened. We have completely defiled this world. And like the fact that people are like, when we would, when we say things to people like, Hey, like, you just going to throw that down and not pick it up? You know, like, there's a trash can right here. And people are like, F you, you know, like, it's, and it's not, it's not Albania. It was the same thing. We watched so much trash go down the river in, in, in Ukraine when we were there. So it's just, our humanness is, the soul has, has left the building, so to speak. So I'm, I'm understanding more that we're in kind of some dire, dire times. And we, we do need to, like, figure it out and, and move on. So oh, I have my glasses on. Brenna says it resonates. I feel the dead. It has been harder and harder day by day to keep living in the not sustainable energy. Yeah, me too. It's depleting. And, that's, you know, like that's what I keep I kept telling Bud for the last few weeks that he was here because he was he was even I have a, I, I have a I have a I, I can hold energy really well. But once, you know, and he was dipping really low, like he wasn't creatively being, you know, filled here food wise. He wasn't, you know, ingredient wise for him to, to cook. That's his creative outlet. That's how he gets filled. There's been nothing filling him and um, nothing filling me too. But I like, I, you know, ha except for this, like this piece talks, this, this world here has been the thing because I, it's helped me to keep tuning in and being filled. And, and yet we need more. We need like, we need a whole life of fulfillment. And once he left, I could be like, oh, I could let it go. 
And I realized the other night I was telling him, I said, honey, there's like nothing in this world that fills me anymore. Nothing that's filling me. You know, I don't have community. Like I'm ready to move on to wherever this jet is taking me. I'm like ready and willing. And I think that's where we had, we have to get to, we have to get to that resonance where we just trust this process so much that we are willing to ascend to wherever we're going because staying here for me is not an option. That, that, that door that be, that I shut, I'm like, I'm done with the old world. That shit's burned down now. So like I, I'm, I'm willing, take me to wherever and whatever that means, because this, this world is no longer supporting me in, in, in many ways, in, in almost all ways. So I'm okay with this. I wonder if this explains why my kids and I have been having so much difficulty sleeping or even falling asleep. Circadian rhythm is off. Um, it could, it could be, the um, I, and it's funny because I've been sleep, like I look forward to sleeping because I, I I sleep really well and the other thing too Jessica that comes to my mind Bud has been like I mean he's like a horrible sleeper anyway like he he does a he does a lot of work in his in his sleep hours and he's a physical worker which means in like in his sleep. He is like all over the place. So, you know, m- majority of, of our, you know, the first few years that we were together, I would just come out and sleep on the couch. Then it got to the point where I was like, I'm just going to sleep in a bed by myself um, because we have, we have other ways, you know, we, we bond and we're, we're close, but sleeping with him is, is, is hard because he is such a physical sleeper. And what I know about astral travels, and especially in these last couple of, of um, I, I don't know, linear time, like year, you know, we have been astrally traveling to our heaven on earth and building it, you know, um, and, and creating it. So it could be, Jessica, that that you all are not sleeping well because it's it's a, such a an energetic, um, it's such an energetic job, so to speak, that, that you're like kind of finalizing things and putting, putting the, 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 you know, the final things on uh, the, uh, on your heaven on earth, whatever that means for you. Um, I don't know. That's what just came to me, but I, I don't know if that that's it, but it, it could be, you know, just, and also with, with all of the systems that are, you know, shutting down now that, you know, we've gotten the message that earth is flatlined it, you know, yes, like all the systems are trying to like keep themselves alive, you know, like just think of a physical body once, you know, once it starts to shut down, like everything starts freaking out to, to, you know, cause it's like, it's supposed to be working. It's supposed to be working, but I'm, but it, it's not getting, you know, the blood, it's not getting the oxygen. And so if that's like, what's kind of happened energetically to our, our, our earth, it could like, it could be that the circadian rhythm is off. So it could be a, a few different things is, is what comes to me. Um, if that, if any of that makes sense. So yeah, whatever, um, you know, here we're, we're, we're flatlined and we're being evacuated. So take that with you throughout the day, put that in your, put that seed in your consciousness again. Um, don't, you know, I say, don't spend too much time on it. Um, I'm saying that to myself because I'm so fascinated and all day been like, give me more, give me more, give me more. But I've got nothing else other than that. I think it's a seed that's been planted, some illumination for us. Um, and, and to really start connecting dots to see like what, what this could look like. Cause each of us is, is going to be moved, um, in a different way. And it could just be energetically if, if you are in the, the, I, I yeah, I don't know. I can't, I can't really talk about it much more cause I can only speculate and I don't want to speculate, I'm just giving you what has come to me and we'll, we're, we'll see Lord have mercy. These peace talks have gone completely different than I ever thought they were going to go. Um, on Sunday when I gave the, you know, farewell world, I had no clue. I'd be talking to you about the flatlining earth on Tuesday. So who knows where we're going to be on Thursday, but I'm, I'm pretty, um, uh, I'm pretty amazed in how much movement in, in frequency happens in between these, these peace talks. So, um, big, big jumps in consciousness are, are occurring now. So that, that what the message said about, um, ascending really quickly is, 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 is happening, um, in, in my own consciousness. So who knows where we'll be on Thursday and, um, we're just going to take it one day at a time. So if you have anything, send me, you know, send me either a DM or, or email me, 
Um, my email address is on, on my website, but just like shoot me an email. Like if, if, if you make any, any connections, because I'm curious with, with what's coming through for you and um, we'll go from there. My, uh, my light, my inner light is not going down, but my sunlight is. So it's getting dark here, but um, so I'm going to, I'm going to run, but so much love to you. Thank you all for holding space for that. Cause that was a really freaky and not freaky, but that was a, it was a hard conversation, a vulnerable conversation. Cause that's speaking in a, in a way that I've never um, openly spoken about. So it's pretty hard. You know, it feels like a big challenge to put it out there and be so vulnerable and, you know, see what happens. Thanks so much for being here, y'all. See you on the next one. Bye.